Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Joe Carroll Dennison was a reluctant pageant contestant when a banker in Tyler, Texas, convinced her to represent his bank in a local pageant. She reluctantly agreed. She won and went on to win a string of contests, and her life took off on an unexpected trajectory. She went on to win several more, including Miss America in 1942, during which she also won the swimsuit competition. But during her reign, she refused to parade around in a swimsuit again as she visited military bases, defence plants and hospitals during World War II. Why had Joe Carroll Dennison such a moral compass you should learn from? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Dennison, who was the oldest living Miss America and had refused to wear a swimsuit on stage again after being crowned, Dennison is a model for young women and men in a world where many are tempted to bend to social expectations rather than trusting and following their own moral compass. How did Joe Carroll Dennison become Miss America? Dennison was born in an Arizona men's prison in 1923. Her mother went into labour while Dennison's parents were travelling to California at the time. When her mother, Elizabeth, was about to give birth, her father, Harry Arthur Dennison, decided he wanted his child born in California, which he viewed as more glamorous than Texas. So they started driving west. By Arizona, her mother was in labour and they stopped in the small town of Florence. The only help they could find was the prison doctor, who delivered Joe Carroll in the prison infirmary. They carried on to California in what Miss Dennison called their house car, a Model T Ford with the flat bed of a truck. Dennison grew up performing in her parents' travelling medicine show. She sang, danced and performed on trick horses. When she was seven, her father left, which shattered her. After Depression-era gigs with a circus and carnival, she rode trick ponies and roped steers. She and her mother moved back to Texas, first to the tiny town of Hale Center, and then to Waco, where they signed on with another medicine show. She and her mother moved back to Hale Center, where Joe Carroll graduated from high school in 1940. She later moved in with an aunt in East Texas. She had enrolled in business school and went on to train as a secretary before being scouted for the Miss Tyler pageant in Tyler, where she was studying at the time. She was later discovered while working at a bank and was offered to enter a beauty contest. She had sworn never to perform in public again, following her medicine show days. But she eventually agreed to compete in the Miss Tyler pageant on the promise of a free swimsuit from a high-end department store. Once she accepted, she wrote, her competitive juices kicked in. With the stage presence she had learned from her father, she strode around in her new black and white swimsuit with an attitude to kill. She won the Miss Tyler, Miss East Texas and Miss Texas contests in rapid succession, then hopped a train to Atlantic City to compete in the biggest pageant of all. With her own orchestral arrangement of Deep in the Heart of Texas and a high-spirited performance in a cowgirl outfit that had the audience clapping along as she sang, the newspapers called her the Texas Tornado. She took the pageant by storm. She swept the talent and swimsuit contests, and on the final night she won the crown. After a string of small pageant victories, she won the Miss America crown at age 18. The major win came shortly after the US entered World War II. Though she won the swimsuit category, Dennison later refused to wear bathing suits during the year-long reign as Miss America. Speaking at the contest's 100th anniversary gala, she commended the Miss America organization for scrapping the swimsuit portion of competition in 2018 and focusing on the totality of each candidate. Dennison was a wartime pageant queen who stood apart from her peers during her year-long reign, nearly eight decades before the pageant would do away with the swimsuit contest altogether. She felt this would be demeaning, she wrote, especially in some of the low-rent venues where she was sent. She refused to do it and even cut her tour short, though this received little public notice. The rebellious Yolande Bebez Fox, Miss America 1951, got far more attention for rejecting swimwear on her tour because the pageant was sponsored by a bathing suit company, but Miss Dennison preceded her by almost a decade. 
Back in 1942, the pageant was mostly about looks, said Denison in honour of the pageant's 100th anniversary. Yet I never thought I'd won because of the way I looked, but rather because of the way I felt about myself. With this in mind, I flat out refused to wear my bathing suit on stage after the pageant, beginning at with the very first tour stop. The pageant was supposed to be about appearance, she said. Still, I didn't think I won by my own feelings, not by my appearance. With this in mind, I refused to wear a swimsuit on stage after the pageant. While Denison loved certain aspects of being Miss America, she also felt the title gave people the impression that she was an empty-headed sex object. At parties, it was more a stigma than an accolade. She still smarted years later when she recalled Groucho Marx telling her, You're almost articulate for a bathing beauty. She went on to have a career in Hollywood, appearing in several films and TV series. She also signed a contract with 20th Century Fox, starring in movies including The Jolson Story and the wartime drama Winged Victory. When she arrived in Hollywood to seek her fortune, the press called her The Body and the new Lana Turner. Her proximity to Hollywood saw her cross paths with many of the era's celebrities, and she embarked on relationships with Charlie Chaplin's son Sidney and comedian Phil Silvers, whom she married in 1945 and divorced five years later. She was beautiful, intelligent and popular. She was a regular at Gene Kelly's Saturday night parties with Judy Garland, Marilyn Monroe, Frank Sinatra and Gregory Peck. When the US entered World War II, she participated in the war by selling war bonds and visiting soldiers in hospitals and camps to boost morale. Miss America was a concrete symbol of the country, Denison spoke in gala, arguing that what impressed the soldiers most was not the swimsuit, but the patriotic symbol of her title. It was their vision of democracy that thrilled their hearts and stimulated their bodies. According to Stars and Stripes, the military newspaper, photos of her in Life magazine made her the GI's second most popular pin-up girl after Betty Grable. Like many beauty queens of the era, Denison signed a movie contract and later played Breathless Mahoney, who was made famous by Madonna on the other side of Warren Beatty. She married CBS producer and director Russell Stoneham, with whom she had two children, though they separated in the 1970s and subsequently divorced. While she never achieved stardom as an actress, she spent decades in the company of Hollywood royalty, but life wasn't all glamour. She was abused at the age of 12. She was one of the first beauty queens to refuse to wear a swimsuit during her Miss America reign, a period that she called indentured labour, and as a starlet who was routinely objectified by powerful men. She was constantly fending off attempts to land her on the proverbial casting couch. These experiences made her a feminist long before there was a movement to support her. I'm glad to have lived long enough to see how women's fight against inequality, sexual harassment and abuse has finally come to the fore, she said. Jo Carroll Dennison retired from the screen in 1953 after failing to break through to major stardom. She reflected on how far the organisation has come and how fortunate she felt to have been part of it. The eight decades that have passed since I won the pageant have been filled with wondrously fascinating experiences, she said in a pre-recorded message. But whenever I'm introduced to a stranger, whomever they may be, nobody talks about the many adventures I have had. Invariably they say, she is a former Miss America, you know. And to this day people are fascinated and eagerly say, oh really, what year? Dennison went on to share how delighted she was when the organisation announced in 2018 that they were scrapping the swimsuit portion of the competition. In its place, each candidate will participate in a live interactive session with the judges, where she will highlight her achievements and goals in life, and how she will use her talents, passion and ambition to perform the job of Miss America. The winner of Miss America currently wins a $50,000 scholarship, as well as a six-figure salary during their reign according to time. I hope that future Miss Americas can help further the progress of healing the divisions in our country among racial lines, fight voter suppression and motivate us all to respond to the spectre of climate change, she continued. As in the 1940s, Miss America has an opportunity to represent values that unite and heal. So I left my glass to the future Miss America 
may they continue to be a force for good. Being groomed for stardom by the pitiless Hollywood machine made her feel like a commodity on a production line, and dressing as a sex symbol made her queasy. The eight decades that have passed since I won the pageant have been filled with wondrously fascinating experiences, she said. I was in the movies in Hollywood, on the stage in New York, and on television in both places. I worked in production behind the camera all over Europe and Israel, and back at home on the first live television drama. Decades after winning the crown, Denison also began giving back to the community in another way, as a hospice worker. I had a fantastic life and met so many interesting, talented people. I thought I should do something to give back, so I worked at Hemet Hospice for 11 years. Denison, who had worked there in the 80s and 90s. When she had toured military bases as Miss America, she raised morale but knew that the soldiers were cheering her as a symbol, not for anything she had done. But when working directly with hospice, I felt that I was fulfilling that purpose and using the Miss America title in a far better way. I feel it was truly the most purposeful, rewarding work I ever did, she continued. When I was Miss America, the boys were so terrific, but it was the symbol that they were applauding. Working for hospice, I thought I deserved the applause I got. Denison's story is one of overcoming the adversities of a disjointed childhood and subpar education, taking up social causes and crafting a vibrant intellectual life. Joe Carol Denison was 97 and the oldest former Miss America when she died on October the 18th at her home in Idlewild. Her son, Peter Stoneham, confirmed the death. She is survived by her sons, Peter and John Stoneham, as well as her three grandchildren. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. I know why you like this video. It is rare when a person can have beauty intelligence and such moral strength. You can really learn a lot from people like Denison. Through another example, I can show you how to break down the gender barriers. Look at how Ida Lupino recreated the roles in movie making. I'm sure you can identify with that.